Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Our opening hymn is Lift High the Cross, and that can be found on page two of your bulletin. Please stand as you are able.
great to see everyone here on this second Sunday of Advent. And we'll begin by the lighting of the Advent wreath, and we have a few of our future daughters of the kings. All right, let us pray. We praise you, God, for this circle of light that marks our days of preparation for Christ's Advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, kindle within us the fire of your Spirit, that we may be light shining in the darkness. Enlighten us with your grace, that we may welcome others as you have welcomed us. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. And now we continue on uh, page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer, or there on page 3. Blessed be the one holy and living God, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to, pe to, pe to preach repentance and prepare the way of our salvation, grant us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading <clears throat> by the book of Isaiah. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness, he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips, he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, 
for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nation shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. and 19 responsibly that can be found on page 5 of your bulletin give the king your justice O God and your righteousness to the king's son that he may rule your people righteously and the poor with justice that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the little hills bring righteousness he shall defend the needy among the people he shall rescue the poor and crush the oppressors. He shall live as long as the sun and the moon endure, from one generation to another. He shall come down like rain upon the mown field, like showers that water the earth. In his time shall the righteous flourish. There shall be an abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous deeds, and blessed be his glorious name forever. And may all the earth be filled with his glory. Amen. Amen. The second reading is from Romans. <clears throat> Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may with one voice Glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God, in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs, and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore, I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again, he says, rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse shall come the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. In him, the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Our gradual hymn this morning is on Jordan's Banks, The Baptist Cry, and that can be found on page six of your bulletin. <laughs> Thank you. 
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locust and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him, and all the region along the Jordan. And they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Now even the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. From the book of Isaiah, they will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. In the name of our loving, liberating, and life-giving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, here we are on this uh, second Sunday of Advent as we make our journey towards Christmas as we watch the lights of the Advent wreath continue to increase. And today we hear these very familiar stories. First from Isaiah of this shoot of Jesse that is going to take root and change the entire world. The shoot of Jesse. Well, wasn't that already, hasn't that already happened? Isn't that Jesus who we proclaim? Jesus who we prepare for? So you might be wondering, well, what happened to those times where the cows and the bears would graze together? What happened to those, that, that time, the imagery of a wolf that shall live with the lamb, the leopard that shall lie down with the kid? Where are those times? Where is that peace that the prophet Isaiah spoke of? <clears throat> well, maybe it's right here in front of us, and we just haven't really lived into it, let's say. Because, you know, we are human, aren't we? And we hear this story of John the Baptist coming. And I think that plays into part of it. John the Baptist comes and preaches this repentance, preaches this new way of life. He's out on the River Jordan, and people are gathering around him, and he, you can imagine him kind of sitting there going, wow, these people now have a home. The Gentiles who were off to the side now have a place to come. Now we are really working on things. And then he sees a line of the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming down. I love that. You brood of vipers. I mean, I would love to preach something like that every Sunday. But our attendance would probably be a little bit low, <laughs> even though we are all uh, sinners, of course. But those brood of vipers, wh who told you to come here? 
I like how, I love the brood of vipers. And unfortunately, Eugene Peterson doesn't use that. But I, lo- I love the way the message version of the Bible, written by Eugene Peterson, how he has this. Because I think it speaks a little bit stronger to us. He says, when John realized that a lot of Pharisees and Sadducees were showing up for, ba- for a baptismal experience, because it was becoming the popular thing to do, he exploded. You brood of snakes. I I still like vipers, but he, he uses snakes. What do you think you are doing slithering down to the river? Do you think a little water on your snake skin is going to make any difference? It's, listen, it's your life that must change, not your skin. And don't, and don't think that you can pull rank by claiming Abraham as father. Being a descendant of Abraham is neither here nor there. Descendants of Abraham are a dime a dozen. What counts is your life. Is it green and flourishing? Because if it's dead wood, it goes on the fire. What we are called to be, who we are called to be is to change our, not to change our skin, but to live into a new life. I think we lose a little bit of that within the NRSV version. We've heard it so many times, it's like, oh yeah, and we just discount it. But what does it mean that our lives must change, not our skins? We have come to the baptismal fonts. We have had water poured over our heads or some have been immersed into water. Is it just to change our skin? To wash a little bit of that dirt off of our skin? Or is it truly to change our lives? If we all changed our lives in the the way of following Jesus, the world might be a little bit closer, closer to that imagery that Isaiah has for us where the bear and the cow can graze together. So what does that look like for us as we prepare this way? The message version goes on to explain the kingdom life a little bit. And again, different language, same theme. It goes on to say, I am baptizing you here in the river, turning your old life in for a kingdom life. The real action comes next. The main character in this drama, compared to him, I am a mere stagehand, will ignite the kingdom life within you, a fire within you, the Holy Spirit within you, changing you from the inside out. We are here on this second Sunday of Advent talking about preparing the way, preparing the way for our Lord, preparing the way for this birth of Jesus, and also preparing the way for the second coming. So what are we really preparing? Is all of our preparations just exterior? Making sure the Advent wreaths look very nice? Making sure the Christmas lights are hung very carefully on our our houses? Making sure our tables are set properly? We do a lot of exterior preparing, don't we? But this time of of Advent is about interior preparing as well. Where are those places in your life that can use some rearranging? Where are those places where we try to wash off with water what we really need to just change? Live into that kingdom life. Live into that baptismal life. It's easy to hang new lights. It's easy. We can go down. I, last year, I left mine up too late. The squirrels came and ate them all off, all the <laughs> bulbs off. So what do you do? You go down to Lowe's, you buy a new strand, you put them up. That's the easy part. The hard part is that interior preparation, preparing ourselves not only for this child of Jesus to come back into our lives, to to remember that once again, to prepare ourselves for that second coming, to prepare ourselves to be kingdom people. Too often, I think, the church 
and a, um, a lot of us followers and a lot of us leaders focus a little bit too much on that end time, that second coming time. The kingdom of God is now. We are in the presence of God now. Now is the time to change. Now is the time to live fully into this life of Christ. Now is the time to make the prophet Isaiah that make that prophecy come true, where the wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid. Shoot, we might even have donkeys and elephants working together again. What would it be like? Took a time, took a moment. You got it. <laughs> but what would it look like? What would it look like if we literally, we, we literally changed our lives? That's our call. That's our call within the gospel. We can read it in Isaiah as a prophecy. We can hear it from Jesus as his life plays out. But the question is, will we live it today? What are we, what are you preparing for? What are the exterior things that will bring joy, will bring happiness in this time? I'm not saying it's not important, but that's the easy work. And I know sometimes it gets really hard making sure that table is perfect. But if we're only doing the exterior work, if we're only hanging new lights, we're missing the point. May we prepare the way for the Lord. May we make those paths straight. May we do that interior work so that Jesus can come into our hearts again. So our snake skins can be changed. Our lives can be changed, not just washed. That is our call. That is our joy. That is our ministry. May we prepare the way for the Lord this day and always. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let us stand and affirm our faith with the Nicene Creed, found on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer, or page 7 of your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people form three can be found in page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer or page eight of your bulletin. 
Father, Mother, Creator of all, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Bishop Kim, for all bishops, priests, deacons, and lay ministers, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. Today, we lift up Chuck Miller and all those we know and love but see no longer. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and the needs of others. Today, Lord, we pray for all those in our parish family who are sick, those who care for them, and those who are in need of God's strength and guidance. Father Allen family, Rita, Greg, Gina, Doris, Linda and Allie, Lydia, Charlie, Susan, Aaron, Kay, Peggy, Patty, Rick H., John and Barbara, Laura, Sharon, Kendra, Kristen, Katrina, Jim, Shelley, Wesley, Stephanie, Debbie, John, Kim, Samantha, Linda, Gail, Baby Brindley Rose, the Almeral family, Daryl, Richard, Steve, Lynn, Marby, Georgie, Jen, Sage, Michael, Jack and family, our military families, law enforcement and first responders, our homebound parishioners and those in nursing facilities, and those and all who are sick, the healthcare workers who care for them. We pray for moisture in this time of drought in Colorado and the West. And today, let us pray together for our country. We pray for justice, we pray for peace, we pray for understanding, and we pray for an end of the racism, hatred, violence, and political division that continues to infect and divide this country. We celebrate with those who have birthdays this week, Barbara Costi, Christine Green, Cheryl Pools, and Bennett Jenkins. We also celebrate the birth of James Benjamin Hoskins. Congratulations to the Hoskins family. Holy and gracious God, we do lift these and all the prayers of our hearts up to you, knowing that you are constantly doing more than we could ever ask or imagine. In Christ's name we pray, amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace, everyone, both here in the sanctuary and on Zoom. God's peace.
God's peace. <laughs> Please be seated. Well, it is uh, great to see everyone today. We do welcome all of our visitors and newcomers. Invite you to sign the guest book in the back if you're here in the sanctuary. And if you're on Zoom visiting us, you can uh, put your information in the chat and let us know uh, who you are. A few items of life in the parish. Um, First of all, if you ordered any of the wreaths um, and or little trees or sprays or any of that type of stuff, um, they are over in the gathering place. Do, uh, please do pick them up, uh, uh, give them a good home. If you didn't um, order any, we do have extras. So if you're looking for a Christmas wreath for your uh, uh, front door or wherever, uh, we do have those over in the gathering place. So uh, you can see, um, um, see us over there and, and grab, grab those if you would like. So a lot of stuff going on in the life of the parish. Uh, that is uh, um, all in the um, uh, bulletin and everything. So please do look at that. We're not going to be able to get to every single one of them in the announcements. Um, we do have the, uh, the gift wrapping going on after this service from noon until about 2 o'clock over in the gathering place. So if you've got presents, you would like to have the youth group wrap. Um, they're wrapping those. Um, if you'd like to give a donation for that, all that money collected will be going to the Help and Hope Center to get presents for their gift room where parents can come and get uh, purchase, or not purchase, receive gifts for their loved ones and do some shopping themselves. So a great way to uh, share, our, share that joy. Uh, the poinsettia donation envelopes are out. So those are in the back if you would like. We also, if someone loves decorating, I just talked about that external decorations. Well, we need someone to help us with it in here in the church. So if you love Christmas decorations and all that, uh, we are looking for a coordinator of those decorations. You don't have to do it all yourselves. And those who come for greening of the church, we still need your help as well. But someone to kind of set that up, set that all and get it ready to roll and then help us get it down in the end too. So there's information about that. Next, or not next Wednesday, in two weeks, Wednesday the 14th, we'll have our Blue Christmas um, service over in the chapel, a time to kind of remember those who have gone before. And uh, for some, or, you know, for some, um, th this time is a hard time to walk through, so a way to be able to walk together through that. So see us uh, for that as well. Uh, we also have our uh, craft sale and bake sale. Crafts will be the next two weeks over in the gathering place, and the bake sale will be on the 18th on Sunday. So um, please do look at all the other announcements that are in the bulletin because we got a lot of them. So uh, again, some great things happening around here. Um, today is also the first Sunday of the month. So anyone with a December birthday, if you would please stand. And on Zoom, you can raise your hand there and all that. All right, we've got a couple of them standing here. And if everyone else could turn to page 10 of your bulletin, page 10, and we'll pray for all those celebrating their birthdays in December. Let us pray. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may thy peace which passes understanding abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday, everybody. All right. How about uh, December wedding anniversaries? None standing. Well, I know. We, well, I saw some way. All right. All right. We've got a few. And then on Zoom, raise your hand there and we'll uh, pray for all those celebrating their wedding anniversaries. Oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these, your servants that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Happy, happy anniversary, everyone. All right. <laughs> And you
And you might be wondering why we have so many Episcopalians sitting in the front row today. Um, and they're all dressed in blue. Today we have the honor of inducting uh, three new members into our Daughters of the King. So I'll invite them up and the uh, uh, leaders and also Harold, Father Harold, who is their chaplain. So I'll sneak over here. Yep. <laughs> Hey, Michelle, you're good. <laughs> yeah, one, two, yeah, three of you can go in between us. All right. It is my privilege to present Michelle, Lucy, and Jill as candidates for membership in the Order of the Daughters of the King. We are gathered here in the sight of God and before this congregation to admit these three women into the Order of the Daughters of the King. We commend them to your earnest prayers that they may have grace, the grace to fulfill the obligations of the order and that their labors may be to the glory of God and to the welfare of all of God's people. The Daughters of the King is an order for women whose mission is to the extension of Christ's kingdom, especially among women and girls through prayer, service, and evangelism. Do you desire to become a member of the Order of the Daughters of the King? I do. Do you promise to obey faithfully the two rules of the Order, the rule of prayer and the rule of service, to offer your support to the clergy for the good of the parish and the extension of Christ's kingdom, to wear faithfully the cross of the Order, and to work for its purposes as God may give you the opportunity? I do with God's help. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, I receive and admit you as members of the Order of the Daughters of the King. And to all of you, will you support these women in their ministry of prayer and service? We will. Let me get over here to the... There we go. Bless, O Lord, these crosses and grant to your servants now admitted into this order such an abundance of your grace that they may wear this sacred symbol in the spirit of humility and with devotion to the service of the King of Kings. Amen. of the order, remembering the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, take up your cross and follow me. Lucy, accept and wear faithfully the cross of the order, remembering the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, take up your cross and follow me. Jill, accept and wear faithfully the cross of the order, Remembering the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, take up your cross and follow me. O oh, Eternal Father, you have sent us your Son to teach us things pertaining to your heavenly kingdom. Give your blessing to our order, wherever it may be throughout the world. Grant that we, your daughters, ever may discern your truth and bear the cross through the battles of our earthly life. Give us strength to overcome temptation and the grace to work to spread your kingdom and serve you all their days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May your love, O Lord, help the daughters live lives of love. And may your holiness lead them to be examples of, of virtue, that they, strengthened by your Holy Spirit, may pray and serve you all their days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. And congratulations. <laughs> And if you have any questions about Daughters of the King, look for someone in blue and ask them to actually ask them to see their cross as well. They're um, amazing. That Daughters of the King cross is an amazing cross. So, all right. Congratulations. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Stand as you are able.
Now we continue with Eucharistic Prayer B, found on page 367 of the Book of Common Prayer, or page 11 of your bulletin. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate of the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Chuck and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray.
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Now we continue with the post-communion prayer found on page 365 of the Book of Common Prayer or page 17 of your bulletin. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be careful as you go out into God's creation, for it does not belong to you. Be gentle with yourself and with one another, for you are the dwelling place of the Most High God. Be alert and hesitant, for sometimes God is but a whisper. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you this day and always. Amen. Our closing hymn is Hark a Glad Sound, found on page 17. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.